As we're about two weeks into this baseball season, I think it's time to tell what are the Nats' strengths and what are their weaknesses, and there are a few of both, but ultimately, it's not all that great. You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you all for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. And of course, I'm your host, Ryan Clary. You can catch me over on X at Ryan Clary 11 and as well as the show page at LO underscore Nationals. For all your latest Nationals news and notes, make sure to check us out over on there. And while you're at it, search Locked On Nationals wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to search that over on YouTube. Hit that subscriber button and as well as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, whatever it may be, we'll have you covered wherever you get your pods. Later on in the show today, the Nationals have one of their semi-top prospects making their debut tonight. That is left-handed pitcher Mitchell Parker. What should you expect as he goes up against a loaded Los Angeles Dodgers lineup? It's not an ideal debut for the kid, but as Josiah Gray battles his elbow injury, that's who will be replacing him as of right now. So we'll discuss that, preview him, kind of get ready for this start, because again, it's going to be a very tough debut for this kid. So we'll discuss that a little bit later on in today's show. And it's a Monday, of course, so the second segment, it is a Nat stock report. Who's been up? Who's been down? I'll give you all the latest individual performances from this Nationals team in that second segment. But in the first segment, Let's kind of just open up the air here because the Nationals, we're kind of two weeks into the season. You know what to expect by now, but still they have some strengths, but they also have some weaknesses and the weaknesses haven't really been all too great, obviously. But before that, today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors from brakes to exhaust kits and beyond. eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive with all the parts you need at the price you want. It's easy to bring home that big win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Again, that is eBay Motors. Before we kind of get into the strengths and weaknesses of this Nats team, we do have to kind of get everyone caught up from over the weekend. Let's just start off with yesterday's game because that was an atrocity. The sixth inning yesterday, the Nationals have a 6-1 to lead. Trevor Williams, again, goes five and a third innings. He's been the Nationals' best starting pitcher through his first three starts. Plain and simple. He's been very good this season. Kudos him. And yeah, he's going up against a pretty lackluster Oakland A's lineup. But still, this is a team that just beat the Texas Rangers in Texas in two out of three games before coming to in Oakland, playing against the Nationals. It wasn't all that pretty. But still, you kind of see the point of it. This Oakland A's team, they're not just going to roll over. And they did not. As the Nationals had that 6-1 to lead, You saw it kind of go away real easily, and that was from that Derek Law sixth inning yesterday in which he blew the 6-1 to lead. Wasn't all that pretty. This is not something that everyone should be overly concerned about because, again, Derek Law has actually been pretty damn good, but it's also not just the only headline from this weekend. The biggest headline, in my opinion, is Kiber Ruiz is still sick. It's almost been a week up to this point. Kiber Ruiz still has not been in the lineup has not even been in the clubhouse at this point. And now it is expected that Drew Millis will be coming up to the major leagues and to make a second stint up in the majors. It has not been a great go for it for Kiebert so far this season, and especially with this sickness thing. And we always talk about it with Riley Adams. We talked about it last week about how he should get more at-bats moving forward. This is not really boding too well for the Nationals' quote-unquote franchise catcher. When you have Riley Adams and the way that he's been hitting, which, by the way, We'll discuss him in the Nats stock report coming up and the way just he's been killing the baseball all season long, continuing what he had done this last season. And of course, coming off a broken Hayman injury, it's impressive to say the least. But still, Kiba Ruiz is still sick as of right now. Drew Millis is going to be coming up from the minor leagues to take that second catching spot. We'll just have to see what transpires. But here's where the Nats kind of stand as far as their strengths and weaknesses go. Number one, this is kind of something that I wanted to see a lot this year. I think Davey Martinez discussed it a lot this offseason. It's kind of one of their goals, what they wanted to get better at. The Nationals' number one strength so far is stolen bases. This is a team that is second in Major League Baseball behind the Reds. And also, not even to mention, Lane Thomas. So far, someone who stole just 20-plus bags this last season. 
now already has seven stolen bases through the first two weeks of the season. This is something that I think we all kind of saw coming because last year, he didn't really run that much. The reason why that is, well, they didn't really need him to. You have C.J. Abrams in front of you who's going to be stealing 45 to 50 bases. But now you have Lane Thomas who leads this team with seven stolen bases already again through the first two weeks. And this is also kind of while he has been slumping. I'm expecting a huge stolen base season from Lane Thomas. And really, if he's not going to be hitting for power, which you saw the home run he hit in yesterday's contest, he's starting to heat up just a little bit, get back on the right track, in which we all kind of expected him to this season. But this is going to be a big revelation for this team. This is going to be the identity of the Nationals in 2024, in my opinion. It's stretching those singles into doubles with the stolen bases. When you have C.J. Abrams on the base path, which, by the way, he's only got a handful to start this season. I believe he's only got three to start 2024, in which you probably would have expected him to have five to seven, kind of where the way <laughs> that Lane Thomas is going at this point in time. But even beyond all that, this Nationals team, it's kind of the same mold from last season, the scrappy Nats. That's kind of what we're seeing so far this season. And the reason why that is, is because you don't really have the power. You don't really have guys who are going to go out there and hit 30 to 40 home runs on this team. It's just not really there. It's not in our identity. So when you don't really have power, you're going to have to have some stolen base threat. Because again, you can stretch those singles and doubles and a triple and a double with those stolen bases and kind of mess with pitchers on the base path, kind of affect the way that they may attack a hitter. When you have someone like a Joey Gallo in the middle of your lineup, you know, it's kind of easy to get to an 0-2 count, spike a curveball in the dirt and see if we can get him chasing a little bit. But when you have someone like Elaine Thomas, CJ Abrams, Eddie Rosario, hell, even a Joey Gallo on the base path, you're going to have a smart base runner, number one. And number two, you can't really throw that pitch there. You're going to have a lot of different outcomes from this. And ultimately, in today's game with the new rules and everything, how it's much easier to steal, this is going to be a good outcome for this team. That, in my opinion, is their identity so far this season. So even beyond all that, they have that strength. What is their weaknesses? Well, we kind of mentioned it. And it's the same as 2024. Home runs. It's not good. You have to have power in today's game in order to have any sort of success. And again, you can make up with that by having that stolen base threat. But still, when you are 25th in baseball with only 13 home runs to start this season, which by the way, it's not pedestrian numbers, but it's not good. You need to have more power. You look at guys like Joey Gallo, not really helping all too much as far as that category goes. Joey Manessis, not really helping. Keybert Ruiz, while he's on the shelf right now, not really helping. Riley Adams, you've seen some doubles, seen a couple home runs. Still, you need to see just a little bit more, and that is kind of what will propel this team into some more wins down the line. You're going to have James Wood come up and help you maybe sometime by mid-May, maybe by June, maybe even sooner than that at this point because he's been killing the baseball down in the, down in the minor leagues. But also, there is another strength with this team, and we'll give one strength, the defense. So far... They only have five errors this season. That is second best in baseball to start this season. You saw it from two years ago. In 2022, the Nationals had an awful defense. They were the worst team in baseball, in my opinion. And even beyond all that, it was not good. The pitching, awful. The defense, awful. As soon as you trade away Juan Soto and Josh Bell, the offense, awful. All the different productions that you look at, they were not producing in any single category. So looking on all of this front... The Nationals, they've got their identity. Number one, strong defense. Number two, strong kind of base running team. And that was one of their main goals going to the season as that's why they hired Gerardo Parr to be their first base coach. David Martinez is in here. That's why they got Eddie Rosario in the building as well. So what is a notorious, very good base runner. And then, of course, the weakness, which is the most glaring one of all of them, is their lack of power so far this season. So the Nationals, They've got their identity, but now you got to do a little bit more. And thank you all for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. And of course, check us out over on YouTube. Just search Locked On Nationals there. And as well as anywhere you get your podcast, just search again Locked On Nationals. Next, we're going to tell you guys about a Nats stock report. Who's been up? Who's been down? We'll tell you about that after we tell you guys about our good friends over at E. 
eBay Motors. And guys, when we talk about eBay Motors, you need to know all different things with them because passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the price you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers again that is ebaymotors.com next now can we tell you guys about our new friends over at monopoly go and guys i've been told i'm a competitive person okay well yeah i do have a competitive side we all do. And my com- competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that brings you big buddy. But the best part is besting with my friends. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. But now I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. Again, download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play Store. Let's get into the Nat Stock Report. As you always know, this is the best content for your latest individual performances. Who's been up? Who's been down? We always start off on the good stuff with a stock up, and that stock up is for Riley Adams. As Keybet Ruiz has been on the shelf here with a little sickness. Riley Adams has stepped in, played very good defensively behind the plate, and also at the plate, He's been getting the job done. And again, this is one more plead for Riley Adams to get more offensive at-bats. Anyway, anyhow, he needs to be hitting at all times at this point in time. So over his last 15 at-bats, he's got three doubles, or three extra base hits, rather, and seven hits overall, and again, his last 15 at-bats. Riley Adams, you're going to have to start talking about this guy not only being a DH, but even that platoon position with Kiba Ruiz and Riley Adams, yes, we do have a lot of money invested in Kiba Ruiz over the next eight to so years, but still, even beyond all that, when you have someone hitting the ball like he is, even going dating back to last season, even some points in 2022 when you saw Riley Adams' power, this is starting to be kind of a success story for this team. Traded back in 2021 for Brad Hand, this is going to be a pretty big storyline to watch, in my opinion. Some point during this season, if Kiba Ruiz is going to be struggling and Riley Adams is going to be hitting the baseball, there will be a conversation to be had for Riley Adams. I don't think the Nationals are just going to set him to the side and say, well, this is going to be Kiebert's job moving forward. No, that's not the case. This is now a year plus of Kiebert Ruiz kind of slumping a little bit while you have Riley Adams, a backup catcher, who is better defensively at this point and also has been better offensively. There's going to be a discussion moving forward. It'll just be interesting to see what Davey Martinez does, but they're seeing the numbers. They see the production. He's not going to be down there for much longer. I can tell you that. Stock down for Eddie Rosario. Over his last 22 at-bats, and really those 22 at-bats consist from April 1st all the way through April 15th, he only has one hit in those 22 at-bats. Listen, Eddie Rosario, defensively, not all that great. We've seen him kind of mess around in the outfield a little bit. But also what he does provide offensively is is kind of – just overall veteran presence. This is someone who has won World C- or NLCS MVP. This is someone who has gone down in the Atlanta Braves system, who has been with them, been with the Twins, been with good organizations in the past. But still, Eddie Rosario just has not been getting it done so far. It was a minor league signing for this team. We all expected him to be a major league call-up to play some relatively big innings for this team. Now you see it. It just hasn't been all too great. So Eddie Rosario, while... Wow. You would like to see him do a little bit more. You would like to see him have a little bit more production overall. He's not getting the job done up to this point. He's been slumping big time 
We'll just have to see what Davey Martinez does with him because ultimately you got to have a little bit more production offensively if you're Eddie Rosario. And of course, when you're that veteran guy playing left field every day, you're going to want to see just more overall. Better offensive production, better defensive production, but ultimately he's here for leadership qualities and I'm sure he's probably helped in one way or another. Stock up for Mackenzie Gore. 11 strikeouts on Saturday. Yep, 11 strikeouts, only one walk, zero earned runs. May have been one of his best starts as a Washington National. Even the start before that looked really good, and this is why Mackenzie Gore is your ace in the year of 2024 and beyond. This is going to be the normal, in my opinion. This is going to be the new norm for Mackenzie Gore. The 25-year-old, the lefty, he's going to come in this season. He knows this is going to be a big season for him. I would not be surprised to see him representing you at this all-star game at some point in July. Mackenzie Gore is going to be a very good from the line kind of pitcher for this team, whether he's going to be your ace or he's going to be your very good number two kind of guy. You see the intensity out there. And yes, you may be saying you're going against the Oakland A's. It does not matter. When you strike out 11 batters over five innings, and again, I would like to see a little bit more production. I'd like to see maybe going to six to seven innings, kind of like Max Scherzer did back in the day, but pile up those strikeouts, 11 of them over five innings. I'll take that any day of the week because that kind of just goes to show you his stuff is nasty. We've seen it with the curveball. You've seen it with the breaking, all the different things you want to see from Gore, you are seeing in the year of 2024, and that is what this season is about. The young players kind of taking those steps up, and ultimately, it's paying off for this Nationals team. Stock down for Joey Gallo. Joey Gallo only has two hits over his last 22 at-bats. I kind of fluttered around with this a little bit. I was like, should I really go with stock down? Because this is what Joey Gallo is. He's not coming in here to hit for batting average. He's not coming in here to just play defense. Joey Gallo is going to come here to hit a home run, hit a double, or strike out, or walk. Those are the four things. You're not going to get a lazy single up the middle. You're not going to get blooper hits. He's either going to kill the baseball or he's going to strike out. Really no other options. So listen, you should not be concerned. This is just what Joey Gallo is. Having a batting average under 200, that's just the player he has been since 2019, since 2020, since really he has just kind of fallen off in general. He has not batted over 200 since I believe 2021 now up to this point. I don't think he's going to bat over 200 this year, but still, you're going to get some power production because, again, those two hits, one of them was a double, one of them was a home run, so you can't really kill the guy for being himself. This is what you expect. But also, when you have a lot of different situations, runners in scoring position, when you strike out four times in yesterday's game, you know, all four of your at-bats, you're going to get called out a little bit. That was not good. You cannot strike out in all your at-bats and then just have one walk and say, well, did my job. Not really how it works in today's game. You need to have some sort of production, have some sort of impact. And again, two hits over your last 22 at-bats, that's just not cutting it for this team. It's not going to do us all too well moving forward. Stock up for Jesse Winker. Beyond his offensive production, this is someone who leads Major League Baseball in outfield assists right now. He's got three outfield assists on the season. His batting number has been very good just beyond even this last week. Go into starting in left field, wherever you put him, Jesse Winker is starting to be a bounce back candidate for this team, even beyond a Joey Gallo. Jesse Winker has a prominent role with this team. I don't know how long it's going to last because, again, you have James Wood knocking on the doorsteps of big league baseball. You'll have Dylan Cruz maybe at some point this season, maybe, hell, even Robert Hassel at points of 2024. But now, Jesse Winker, you can't really take this guy out of the lineup. He's going to be your everyday left fielder. Right. Wherever you want to put Jesse Winker, that's just fine for me. He's not going to be the most prominent role player ever, but still, the way that he's been hitting the baseball, he's been one of the Nationals' better hitters to start this season. Him and C.J. Abrams have really been kind of killing it up in the top of the lineup. I expect Jesse Winker to continue to be in this lineup, continue to be a major contributor, and also kind of being that veteran presence. You've been hearing some chirping about him kind of taking guys' leads, taking the role of that you kind of want to see because, again, this is someone who was a former all-star back in Cincinnati, a top pick, a top prospect. Now you see it with Jesse Winker. Now you're kind of seeing it right in front of your eyes. He's starting to turn around a little bit. I'm not going to say just believe in Jesse Winker, 
But still, it's looking pretty damn good. Thank you all for making Locked On Nats your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. And of course, Mitchell Parker makes his debut tonight against the Los Angeles Dodgers. We'll preview that for your final segment here on Locked On Nationals. But before that, let me tell you guys about our good friends over at Yahoo Finance. And wouldn't it be great if you could see all of your investment and retirement accounts in one place with Yahoo Finance? You can consolidate your views from multiple accounts into one hub and access the expert analysis you need to tend your entire portfolio with confidence. I have, you know, an account with Schwab and a 401k with Fidelity. I've been using Yahoo Finance to consolidate them in one place, which has made it incredibly easy to manage them. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. They are the number one finance destination product producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, and independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. Guys, for comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com. The number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. Again, yahoofinance.com. Thank you all for making Locked On Nats your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Left-handed pitcher Mitchell Parker makes his Major League Baseball debut tonight against the Los Angeles Dodgers. You'll catch him against Tyler Glass now, which, by the way, another Dodger trade that they made this offseason. He has turned his career around. Again, it's only through three starts. He has battled some injuries over the years, but still, he's going to be one of the Dodgers' better pitchers this year. He gets to face up against Mitchell Parker in his major league debut. So here's what you can expect. First off, get to know Mitchell Parker. Going into last year, Mitchell Parker had a very impressive 2022 season, had an ERA under three, which you don't just look at ERA, but still over the course of his years in minor league baseball, he was a 2020 fifth round pick out of Juco, 24 years old, and through again, 2021, 2022, 2023, and of course, through his first start in 2024, he's got 11 Ks per nine innings. That tells you right then and there, this guy gets a lot of swings and misses. He's got good stuff. He's got a very solid fastball, a very good curveball, and a slider and changeup that he mixes in as well. But you're going to see a lot of heavy curveball usage in tonight's contest, especially against this Dodgers team. It'll be interesting because, again, I don't really know what to expect from Mitchell Parker. You kind of look back at this last season, you could say, Is he going to be the Jake Irvin of this year where he is a mainstay in this rotation? I don't really think that. I think Mitchell Parker and the ultimate plan for this Nationals team is to have Mitchell Parker maybe be a bullpen piece down the line. But as of right now, the 24-year-old will be making the start tonight against the Dodgers at Dodger Stadium for your debut. You know what else? Nationals prospect also made his debut back at Dodger Stadium. Bryce Harper. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Maybe it's a thing. Maybe it's a thing for Mitchell Parker, but ultimately you kind of know what to expect with him. Again, a fifth round pick in 2020 going up against Tyler Glassow and against one of the more talented teams in baseball we have seen since I don't know when, man. Maybe the 2021 Braves. It's a very good team. You really know what to expect with them. They know their DNA. They're going to hit for power. They're going to get on base. They're going to steal bases, and they're going to pitch very damn well. So the Nationals, they're going to have a handful. And Mitchell Parker, good luck, man. Tough debut, but ultimately, we'll see what the Nats can do. Thank you all for making Locked On Nats your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. So catch the Nationals and the Dodgers tonight as Mitchell Parker makes his debut. We'll have that breakdown for you on tomorrow's Locked On Nationals. Have a good one.